Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. And one of my favorite things about Xbox Game Pass is the fact that it helps you discover new games that you might have missed otherwise. I mean, sure, when Xbox Game Pass gets these big AAA games, that's great and all. But at the same time, what I've always really liked about Xbox Game Pass is finding these games that I would have otherwise missed. Xbox Game Pass has introduced me to a ton of these type of games, and I really think that this is one of the most valuable things about this service. But with all that in mind, what are some of the best hidden gems available in Xbox Game Pass? And that is what this video is for. Now, keep in mind that I have done several of these videos in the past, and I'm not going to repeat any of the games that I had in prior videos. So if I do miss a game that you feel deserves to be on this list, there is a chance that I might have had it on a previous Xbox Game Pass Hidden Gem video, which I will leave a link in the description below. With that in mind, though, let's just go and jump right into the video. And to start this list off, I have a game for you puzzle lovers out there being Super Liminal. Now, this is a mind-bending 3D puzzle game, heavily inspired by Portal, though in this one, it's actually about changing your perception. Now, you can clearly see in the story and environment that it is inspired by Portal, as it does have that robotic voice that's kind of patronizing you throughout the whole game. But the puzzles are quite different in this game. This one's all about changing your perception in each individual room. Superliminal will test you with different optical illusions and perceptions and just try to make you think a little bit differently about your environments and surroundings. This makes for some mind-bending and I think most importantly, unique puzzles. Yes, you might be able to see where some aspects of this game was inspired, but in terms of its gameplay, this game is unique and something that I would recommend for any fan of puzzle games. And here I have Nuclear Throne, which might not win you over based off of its art style or visuals, but in terms of gameplay, this game is insanely fun. Now this is a roguelike twin stick shooter with quite the difficulty curve. I mean, the genius of Nuclear Throne is that it's rather simple to understand. You run around different randomly generated themed levels, you fight a boss, and you shoot at things. It's all pretty simple on the surface, but each mutated creature in this game does have different abilities, and you can build your character the way you see fit in each individual run. This does give the game a lot of replayability, and because it's so fun and so chaotically challenging, this is a game that you're going to want to pick up and play time in and time again. Okay, so this next one here, Library of Runa, is probably the, one of the more unique games that I have played in general. In terms of its gameplay, it's like this combination of a card game with dice rolls and then your more traditional JRPG style of combat. I can't really think of anything that's quite like this game, but it actually meshes really well together and it has a complex and rewarding combat system. Now, there's a little randomness involved in this game, but understanding the complexities of this and then outsmarting your opponent, it feels rewarding to say the least. It also has a captivating story as well as you want to learn more about the universe and the characters within it. Library of Runa is set in a strange and twisted world where you bring in desperate people throughout its world to battle to the death. If they win, they can gain knowledge from the library, but if they lose, they then get turned into a book. It is a little dark and twisted, but it is captivating with its visual novel type story. But if you are looking for a good story, I do feel think this one is highly interesting. Next up here, I have Flynn, Son of Crimson. And the first thing that's really going to stand out with this game is its beautiful 2D pixel art. This game is quite a looker, and that's not just with its characters, but also its varied environments to keep things interesting level to level. Now, that is something about this game, though. It was originally advertised as being a Metroidvania game, but instead it ended up being an action platformer with linear levels, though it does have some backtracking as you gain new abilities. This does work very well in a game like this, though, and not just because it's pretty to look at, but it's also because it's quite simply fun to play. The combat in this game may be simple, Simple, but it's also fun at the same time with a roll, you have melee combat, and then you also have your more ranged attacks. Because the controls are so responsive in this game, it's always a joy to play through. And then on top of that, you do have some clever puzzles along the way with several fun boss fights as well. If you ever wanted to play a game where you play as a goose that kills everything in its path, well, I got something for you here being Mighty Goose. Now, this is a fast and frantic run and gunner with just pure chaos throughout every level. 
The goal of the game is to basically destroy every enemy in your path with lots of enemies to defeat, and you do have a range of weapons to keep all of this interesting. You can also get different companions in this game that has their own unique abilities, which does give it a little extra layer of strategy. And if you grow tired of some of the weapons in this game, well, they do also have vehicular combat as well. Now, this game isn't overly challenging, and it's not necessarily all that long, and you can beat this in a couple of hours, really. But like I said before, this game is a lot of fun to play through. I've moved several times throughout my life, and I can honestly tell you every single time it has been just truly awful. So that's why I'm just as surprised as you that I'm including a game unpacking on this list. Quite frankly, that's what you do in this game. You play as an unseen protagonist and you unpack several items in various different rooms throughout their life. And we'll kind of get back to that here in just a moment, but somehow they took this terrible, terrible process and they made it into a zen and relaxing experience. That's already impressive on its own. But what's interesting about this game is actually the story. You wouldn't really think about it, but each one of these rooms in a person's life, it tells a story. As you watch this person's different evolutions of life, it just it's something very easy to relate to and it actually has a strong story hidden behind its puzzle gameplay. I'm genuinely surprised about this, but Unpacking actually is a good, relaxing and zen game that also tells a good story in a unique way. The first thing anybody and everybody notices about Crystals is how beautiful this game looks. It has such a unique and vibrant art style, and you can also say the same when it comes to its gameplay. It has some interesting mechanics going on with you being able to look into the future and past all at the same time, and you can use this both in its overworld as well as in combat. Now, I do feel like they could have done a little bit more with the mechanics of this game as there's just so much potential here, but even then, this is still an, an enjoyable experience, especially if you like classic turn-based JRPGs. If you grew up playing these type of games, you might want to check out Chris Tells because it has everything that you want here. It's got the combat, interesting characters, and an overarching story, and it even has that overworld that JRPG fans know and love. Every once in a while, you play a game that you can kind of describe as a special experience, and I think Omno is that game. On the surface, this is an atmospheric 3D platformer, but the way it absorbs you into its world and its visuals is a thing of true beauty. There's a real sense of discovery in Omno with its beautiful and varied atmospheric landscapes, and all of that's enhanced by its superb music. This is just a game that's going to immediately draw you into the world. And what's so fascinating about this game is that it was actually developed by a singular developer, which was previously an animator. And you can really tell with its top notch animations in this game, but it's clear that there was also a lot of love and attention put into its gameplay as well. It does have strong platforming mechanics. It's got clever puzzles. You can gain new abilities to keep things interesting. But I think what makes this game so special is how powerful and emotional emotional it is. It doesn't necessarily need to tell you it's good. You can just feel it. Now, this next one here is a little bit different than some of the other games on this list, and that's because this is a visual novel-esque game being AI the Somnium Files. Though this one does have some gameplay aspects to it, this is still very much at heart a visual novel, but if you like these type of games, then this really is one of the best that you can play right now. This is actually coming from the same creator who worked on Zero Escape Virtual's Last Reward, and if you've played that game, you kind of know what you're getting into here. AI the Somnium Files follows a dark story where you play as a detective with a robotic-esque eye that actually has her own unique personality, which does create for some interesting conversations and situations, but the story is about you trying to solve a case of a serial killing. This game can get dark, it can get gory, but it's always interesting, and if you do like good mysteries or if you want a good story to follow, you need to check out AI The Somnium Files. Now, speaking of games that primarily focuses on their narrative, we need to talk about 12 Minutes. This game has a simple but enticing narrative where you play as a man stuck in a time loop trying to save his wife. 
12 minutes is a thriller that will immediately have you engrossed in its mystery from the very get-go, and thanks to its excellently done voice acting from a top-notch cast, you absolutely are going to want to find out what happens. Now, this is a point-and-click adventure style of game, and it can be challenging at times with its puzzles, and because this game does take place in one singular location, being a small apartment, the pacing at times can be a little off. And because of this repetition, I think some people grow a little frustrated with this game, but if you stick with it, I think this game is well worth it. Echo Generation is a game that I almost feel like was specifically made for me. It just brings this atmosphere and nostalgia from the 90s, and it just so beautifully portrays this with its striking art style. There's just a specific charm and atmosphere to this game, but it does go beyond that. This is also a good turn-based RPG that has some good exploration. It does kind of remind me of a point-and-click adventure game when it comes to its exploration as you have to get specific items to kind of advance the story, but then it does have that turn-based combat as well. The battles pretty much play out like your traditional JRPG, but interestingly enough, they do have interactive battles in this game that utilizes mini games to maximize your damage, similar to some like you would see in the classic Paper Mario games. I've always really enjoyed when games does add this interactive element because it does make the battles a little bit more interesting in my opinion. And I think when you combine that with its exploration and atmospheric world, Echo Generation is well worth a play. If there was any game that ever could be described as an experience, well, that would be the Artful Escape. This game pops off screen with its vibrant and bold color scheme. It is quite the trip, but it does look good in motion. Now, this game, though, is a story-driven platforming adventure about an aspiring musician that lives in the shadow of his uncle, which is a legend. It does have an overall engaging story with whimsical and interesting characters, though I will say that in terms of its platforming mechanics, it's rather simplistic. This is not the most complex or challenging game in the world, but because it does have an engaging story and the characters are really done well, the art style just pops off the screen, the music, and the, just the overall sensation of what this game makes you feel, I think that's why you're going to want to play this game. In all of those categories, the Artful Escape is nothing short of superb, and like I said, overall, this is just a great experience. Over the years, we've gotten some good sports RPGs, but here recently, we got one of my favorites being Dodgeball Academia. This game was such a surprise, and it's probably one of the reasons that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this game, but this is actually probably one of the most likable games that's released in 2021. The first thing you're probably going to notice is its colorful, vibrant art style that almost resembles old cartoons. It really pops off the screen, but it also has some surprisingly deep RPG elements. You Yes, this is a dodgeball game where you can build a three-player team, but each character is unique and has their own moves. You have regular moves, charge attacks, special abilities, and you can learn even more abilities as you level up throughout the game. You can also alter stats, and yeah, this is a legitimate RPG. I also think it has an entertaining but absurd story with over-the-top characters. This game just oozes charm. The Dragon Quest franchise has finally made its way over to Xbox, and yes, that does include Dragon Quest Builders 2. But sadly, I feel this game is often overlooked, which it really shouldn't be. Yes, Dragon Quest Builders 2 was heavily inspired by Minecraft, and that is very evident, but there's a little bit more going on in this game that I think that separates it, and in my opinion, I actually really enjoyed this more than Minecraft. And the reason for that is because this is an overall more focused experience. It is actually a legitimate JRPG with hack and slash combat. It's got a real story to it, and they always give you goals in this game, so you're always building something very specific. For that matter, I really enjoyed the story and the characters in this game, as it's actually quite charming, but then you also just always have something new to do. You're unlocking a new thing that you can build, or you're leveling up your character, because again, this is a JRPG style of game. So really, just from top to bottom, I think Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a great game that I would highly recommend. And at the number one spot, I have none other than The Forgotten City, which is a game that really took me by surprise. I was not expecting this game at all, as this is apparently some kind of mod built for Skyrim, but it is so much more than that. 
this game is special and it is unique. It is a little different than other games as you don't really focus on combat per se, but rather it focuses on its narrative with dialogue choices as you kind of play a detective in a cursed Roman city. In this game, you actually travel about 2000 years into the past to the final days of a cursed Roman city where if one person sins, everyone dies. This leads to a gripping mystery in an atmospheric world and truly this is one of the most unique games that I have played in a very long time. Now, I will recommend going into the Forgotten City as blind as possible, but trust me, this is an experience unlike any other, and it is excellently told with a fantastic narrative. Truly, one of my favorite experience of the entire year. Anyways, though, that's it for this list, but if I forgot to mention any of your favorite games, make sure to let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.